So here we are, the J29 Tuna Can. It's surprisingly average, really. It's not too slow, it's not too fast, it turns below average even. And the acceleration is only at high speed, it's not better than most. I thought I'd bring the, the MiG-17 up a little bit. He has been chasing me since all the way across the map, as well as the A5 Sabre that's somewhere lurking as a dot. You can't really see him right now. And I thought, if I bring him up a bit, if I go to 5 kilometers, I can easily out-accelerate him, because I have an afterburner. And then I can just go vertical. Uh, this sadly uh, was quite far from the truth. It didn't work at all. This MiG-17 is definitely running min fuel. And it makes it quite hard to get away from people. If you don't have the energy advantage, where you can use your attention. Sure, this plane is pretty uh, pretty good. It can be pretty, pretty untouchable. However, the moment you get someone on your 6 like this, especially if they try to air brake you or know that they don't want to overshoot or play it extremely passive and keep braking off at like 300 meters, there's very little you're going to do. And it's a bit of trying to be very risky, giving them shots, making them cocky, and that's pretty much the only way you're going to make people overshoot. Here I got very lucky. I, uh, I think it was because this guy just got his MiG-17. He was air braking me. And there's also an A5 lurking somewhere. So here you see the air brakes coming out. They're very small on the bottom, on the front of the airplane. And the MiG-17 just runs away. And you can see that like, I have to go slower than them. I have to be slower to reverse someone. And the moment I'm slower than someone, that was actually pretty close. The moment I'm slower than someone, it's very easy for them to just run away. And there's the A5. He chased me all the way across the map as well, just like the MiG-17. So what I do is put in a slight climb for now to cut off the, the angle of the A5. I pull out, try to get maybe a reversal. Yeah, no, no. But that proved to be good for the long run. Believe it or not. Mix 17 coming back. Now I see I'm tangling with the A5. The A5 is coming back as well. And this scenario is pretty much what gets me killed all the time. This is how I died about all my deaths. Except for one where I got completely retarded, but that doesn't matter. I have an A5, and the MiG-17 on me, the A5 is actually the most dangerous, and he breaks off for whatever reason. He probably thinks, so oh, I'll let the MiG-17 deal with that. The MiG-17 is air braking me, but I'm way, way slower than him. And he flies just into my guns. It's probably one of the better shots I've hit all, all year. And we go back to the A5. I'm not very fast at this point. A5 has a lot more energy. But that's actually kind of an advantage, because the A5 that's slower than you, uh, you're not going to get uh, any kills on it. Of course, if I have a lot more energy, or he doesn't like just helicopter me, well, it's not really a prop, so he doesn't really helicopter me, he just veto me, then it's not a problem. But in this scenario, I definitely want to be slow. I'm only going 300. The A5 doesn't excel that much worse at these speeds and it turns a lot better so you don't really want to, to tangle with this but I'm a lot slower than him at this point because I've been throttle dropping I'm using my flaps as air brakes I'm not, and I'm air braking itself as well just get out of his guns ah, fuck up the shot due to the rudder very unfortunate and the air brakes you can see how small they are I completely forgot about them at this point because if I had him killed him there, he could have just gone up. And a few, and it was one of the earlier games I did, so I was getting used to the plane. And it's a bit weird to fly, really. That's hit. Pretty sad. There will be some highlights at the start of the game, and then the, or at the video. And then slowly, in the end, I have two longer games. One fuel game, and one just partially near the end of it. So if you don't enjoy these clips, then feel free to skip to like 12 minutes. It's on the Gosun map, I think. Or Crims. Crims, it's on the Crims map. So you'll, you'll see it. I don't have it all planned out yet, so I'm not too sure where it is exactly, but it's near the end. And here we go again, going head on with a Meteor. Not the hardest shot in the world. But of course it's just a crit, which is something I've been experiencing a lot in this thing. They are pretty much Aidens, but they have a lot higher fire rate. The 1400 rounds a minute, opposed to the, the, the Aidens with 1200 as well as the lower ammo capacity of 100 rounds a gun. So if you're used to the Hunter with 150 rounds a gun and only 1200 rounds a minute, you will run out quite a bit faster and you have to be aware of that. Here comes the F-86K, something I have the most fun dogfighting in this game and this plane. 
F86K turns roughly the same, has a bit more power. We go vertical, I lay off my web. And he just I managed to miss that due to my rudder. And I blow a steel off. Sadly, uh, he is not really that dead, and he's just gonna fly around without the steel. And he's gonna get stolen. So that's a bit unfortunate, but the shot shows it nonetheless. And here we get a J29. And the J29, this guy has been running 20 minutes of fuel. I'm running 27. So he's a little bit lighter. And I uh, underestimated the difference. This is one of the later games I did. So I was a bit more used to the plane. He's going to pull it right in front of me. I'm dropping my throttle a little bit. I'm noticing I'm going to overshoot instantly. I'm going right back to the afterburner. Just, just pull out of his guns. And right now he's slower than me. And if I go straight up, he will get a shot. So what I do is I go a bit horizontal. So I don't bleed as much speed and I can then go up after he bled all of his because he's going slightly in a spiral climb. No, I didn't plan to go right through his guns. Uh, I could have been easily dead there. So don't try to replicate that. I just got very... I'm not lucky. Yeah, I, well, you know what I mean. You know, that wasn't ideal. It worked out and that's fine. Now I'm behind him. I'm trying to use my flaps as much as air brakes as I can. Because they improve my turn rate and drop my speed. And the air brake only drops my speed. So I'm trying to use those mostly. And I can see that he's still afterburning. And such is the, the, the nice thing of afterburners. You can see a red flame on the bottom of that plane. And you can tell that he's out turning me. And I don't think he's using his flaps that much. And even then he's just... He's out turning me quite substantially. And then he rolls back. I don't know why he did that. And from potato aim... Trying to understand, okay, the gun is over there, he rolls right into it. Pretty nice fight, I said GG, but you already left, so if you do watch this video by any chance, thanks for the fight, it was a nice one. A5 going roughly the same speed, he's a bit slower than me. I know this because he doesn't have the acceleration to be faster than me at this point, at the same altitude. So, I just go up, and he's gonna try to follow me. The, the crit wing I gave him will bleed the speed even more. So at this point I'm not very worried about him doing anything to me. I'm just going vertical right here and I see the swift coming in and I'm like oh god fucking damn it. I want my kill, I want my clip, I want this nice little stall kill. And I push my flaps just to the limit, just try to nick it off. And it worked. Seahawk, one of many Seahawks that you're gonna see killed in this video, at least on the, the full one. I'm going 950, the Seahawk doesn't go anywhere near that, especially on the deck, and he just did a turn. He's going to try to snipe me from 1.2 kilometers. I'm sorry, but I actually move when people shoot me, so that's not going to happen. I drop back down, I'm, on, I'm still going 500, and I'm good 1.5 kilometers above him. And he's pretty much stalling out at this point, and I tap him out of the air. Very basic kill, but that's, those are the kills you have to go for. The ones where you have a lot more energy, and you can just stall people out. And it's really good at that. The problem is when you fight 9.0s and they're going faster than you. And when they're going faster than you, it's very hard to actually deal with people. Because your attention doesn't mean jack shit when they are going faster than you. And they can outzoom climb you. And here comes a missile. I don't know why he even shot it in that angle. It's an M9B. But whatever, suit yourself. And he has to, he's going to pull up right here. This thing feels a lot like the F86K. If you like the F86K, you're going to like this thing. That's pretty much how it's going to be. It feels very similar. It's... Only the top speed of the F86K and the high speed retention is a lot better. But other than that, they're quite similar. And these guns are a lot harder to use. The, the bullet mounted, the slow, they're going 790 meters a second. It's just like the Aidens. But the way how tall this plane is and how low they are mounted, it makes it very hard to pull lead on people. And a lot of times, and you're going to see that especially in this gameplay, in this game that is, that I keep missing like 2 degrees of AOA to get a shot on someone. And if the guns were mounted, maybe if I had like a kilometer of vertical targeting, that would solve it. But I would make aiming really weird in deflections and in tail chases. You know, I'm totally not used to to vertical targeting. And I only use it on the F4 Phantom pretty much because of the gun port. But other than that, I, I don't really use vertical targeting on anything. And it really throws me off. It always has. So I don't like it. No, and there goes my flap. And there goes the Seahawk I crit just a little bit ago. A vampire, I'm totally not gonna dogfight. A vampire of the Italian kind even, and that thing has a, like 10% more trust. So be aware of that. If you're in a normal vampire, it will out-energy you. It's roughly the same. 
only more trust so it pretty much does everything better than you so be aware of that f86 f86 no 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 not a 7.7 .7. we're not uh, reached that kind of compression yet oh wait we did it's an a5 haha <laughs> please kill me well the the compression here will kick in around 900 i can just i just can't pull it and there you see again that if the guns were top mounted i probably would have killed him right there and so if you think you have enough lead lead a little bit more and you're gonna be fine i didn't really realize it at this point yet this is one of the earlier games i did i just thought i'd do the, the highlights first because this plane is kind of frustrating to fly and i wanted to show you the good bits first to kind of get you interested and if you're interested in the bad stuff as well because you're kind of thinking about buying it then here you are uh, there's more of that here it's more of the, the struggle there's more of the uh, what your average match is going to look like instead of just me showing you highlights of how oh wow look how good this plane is you know i don't want to do that i don't want to sell you a plane that's not worth your money uh, it's definitely a, a special plane it's a very one of a kind unique deal but it's 50 bucks at the moment and i'm not too sure if you want to like pay 50 bucks for a unique plane that's kind of like an f86k of course this thing is a little bit um, it's it's different it's different enough to where i can say yeah it's worth it but i'd say wait until a sale or wait until the uh, the swedish line comes out because right now there's not much uh, reason to fly this thing other than collecting or maybe having a, a different kind of experience because it, it's definitely fun it's not i'm not trying to bash on this plane it's definitely good as well it's it's worth your money just is it worth 50 and by the time this thing goes on sale it's gonna be next year so take that in into account as well if you want a substitute plane, fly the F86K. You're going to be just fine with it. But other than that, this thing is hella fun. It's just maneuverable enough to where uh, you can dogfight people. And maybe reverse some people where you, if you want to be aggressive. But it also has that kind of acceleration where you can kind of boom and zoom someone. And I completely missed that one, sadly. Still not used to the guns. It's the same game as the other one. Just had a little jump cut because I had to fly 20 kilometers. F86 or the F86 I keep saying F86 the F80 is going vertical right here I'm not too sure what he's trying to do here he's very slow and by waiting that long he's just giving me like the ideal shot for me to kill him and again I just lead enough I shot a steel of like the end of a steel I shoot around the cockpit area so I can get pilot snipes if I shoot a bit to the left or right I will shoot the wings off if I shoot a bit like that if I don't lead enough I will shoot the tail off and if I hit the tip of the tail, that mostly means I'm not leading enough and it's not actually on purpose. Because tails don't always come off. And right here we get a Mark III Meteor. It's a C Meteor, I believe. He turns very well. And he has some very good acceleration and retention. So I'm trying to stall him out right here. And to a certain degree, that's going to completely work. And I'm going to go up right here. He's going a lot slower than me. I'm going 400. And I have a lot more separation in the vertical as well. So if he tries to pitch up right here, he's going to stall himself out. And I can probably kill him easily. There goes the F-ADC. If I had my flaps right here, that'd be fantastic. He's not pulling into me right now. And he's going to pull up. So I'm just doing a very slight horizontal turn to bait him into turning with me. He's taking it. I'm going 450. And after he took that turn, I'm going to go straight up. I just did that to bleed a little bit more of his speed. And here we go. It should be perfect. I really wish I had my flaps right here. But I don't. Because I ripped them off. But the flaps rip quite early in this thing. So be aware of that as well. If I had my flaps right here. I would have been easily been able to kill this guy. But you can tell. I don't have my flaps. I drop off my trouble just too late. Because I noticed I'm not getting a shot. And I just miss him. And I was so sad about that. But you know. I'm just going to pull him right back up. And doing that, it stalled him out for the Swift F7. And uh, he had to control a little bit. And I took him out in a very boring way. So I'm not going to bore you with that. Because the rest of the gameplay uh, was... It took three minutes for that to happen. Because he was just rolling around. And I couldn't get my guns on because the thing is very stiff. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'd rather bore you with something that's a little bit more fun. A little bit more enticing. I just took off, it's 4v4, I got an F86K, another F86K and two MiG-15 bis. I got a Hunter dead on the runway, so it's kind of a 3v4. I got the F86A5 over there and I got a Swift F7 in my team. I can reverse the F86 quite easily because I turn better at these speeds. I shoot a bit to the left hoping he would dodge into it because he's going to dodge when he sees that line of rounds. And he actually did it. 
So thank you for that. F-86K is going to be flying around with one wing. And the A-5 is going to completely abandon us. Trying to finish that F-86. Of course, killing dead F-86s is definitely gold's work. And you have to do that. But when it's 3v3 now, right now, that guy is less of a threat. And you're not going to catch him. So please just stay around with me. That Swift still has to take off. And they didn't actually strafe him for whatever reason. Probably being nice. But that's probably the reason they lost the game. So there you go. And I'm just trying to keep my speed up at this point. Because I have no idea where the other guys are. And I don't know at this point what they are. Turbo not killing me a nagger. I don't really appreciate that. I don't nag that much. I just bitch about the game. That's something completely different. It, it's not. Just leave me alone. I tr I'm trying to not nag as much. Okay. Please. Just flying straight at this point. Trying to get the F86K to do something. I'm going around 900. So I should have plenty of energy in the bank to actually dodge these guys. And the thing with this plane is the horizontal retention, in terms of straight line, going very uh, slight climbs as well. The retention is very good, but the moment as you start going like vertical, and I mean that in a looping sense, uh, this thing starts dumping speed extremely easily. And when I'm horizontal and it just pulls so around below 5 degree deviation of the horizon, the speed loss isn't that bad, but as soon as I go above that, and you can see that right here as well, I'm pulling a bit vertical, and I just instantly dump all my speed off, and then I go horizontal, or a bit in a, in a dive, and then suddenly, you see how, how fast the difference is, if you look at my speed guards, and then I thought, was well, the MiG-15, I heard something, and he's right on my left, I just see him in time, and I pull out of his guns, defensive flying against MiG-15s isn't the hardest thing in the world, but of course they can air break you and once they do that they completely out turn you to negate your roll rate so then it just becomes a bit of a problem. They also out break you and they out accelerate you so they can just do that yo-yo on your ass where they break until you outrun them and then the moment you outrun them they close their air brakes again and they will outrun you again. So that's very annoying. I'm quite confident that I can out turn the f 86 k right there because the F86K turns a bit like a bus, I turn a little bit better. And I was going a bit slower, so that makes it even harder for him to, to get a shot on me. Of course, that's a very uh, specific scenario. Because normally when you're slower, you're not actually always going to turn outside of his guns. So normally you're going to turn into his guns, like right here. The, I don't know how that actually hit, though. Because those guns went everywhere. But it's whatever. I got my engine shot out. This guy has to out to be right now. He has been up quite a bit. And that's pretty much going to be game. I got the MiG-15 here. He's going to out to be as well. And they're both going to be strafed by my teammate. After they didn't strafe my teammate. So that's a bit ironic. But you know, it is what it is. I got my engine shot out. I'm really hoping at this point that they are not turning around. But that's pretty much game. That's pretty much the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed this plane. But it's at the same time, it's very damn frustrating. So you got a plane that doesn't turn too well to begin with. It compresses quite badly. It has bullet mounted guns. And those guns don't have the fastest velocity. Bad with having quite low ammo count. All of this is a mixture for a shit bag. And you don't really... Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to use sometimes. But if you can get used to that. If you like this kind of playstyle. Then go for it. It's definitely fun. It's definitely competitive. But you have to keep in mind that it's not the easiest thing to fly. So keep that in mind. Wait for the Swedish tech tree. See what they have. See if you actually want anything in there. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I... Uh, did have some fun making it, especially at the start where the 2v1 was the 17 and the A5. I'm going to remember that one definitely for a long time. This thing uh, is quite sturdy on the landing, as you can see. And I'll be wishing you a nice weekend. And I'll see you in the next one.